All right, so let's get started implementing a simple user admin um, where the system administrator might come here and be able to create instances of users as a form at the top, right? Some buttons that allow you to create users, delete users, edit, select a user that you want to edit, and then update, say OK, if the, and to make those changes permanent. Uh, so let's get started with first creating a, a template of what this page might look like. Uh, we have some, some sample code uh, to get us started. We're going to do our beginnings of that HTML page in this in a document called user admin template client.html. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's see where, where we are. I'm going to open up the pro uh, project for this uh, course. I'm going to close this and open up uh, summer 2019. Excellent. All right. Let's see. This this is where we left off uh, last week. We were get started with the course editor. Uh, course list and whatnot. Uh, so let's uh, let's do some some work uh, for the user admin feature, right? So we said I believe it was suggested that we created inside of an admin directory, and then in there we're going to create this this page, right? This this artifact, right? user admin template client HTML excellent, right? All right, right now it's empty. There's nothing to show. Uh, but I think we have some sample code down here on where how we get we might get started. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this right, and put it here. Let's see what we got. We have uh, an HTML. Uh, it starts here. We have, we have uh, a head tag, and um, that head tag is going to load Bootstrap from uh, from a CDN, right, from a content delivery network. It's also going to load Font Awesome, also from the same CDN. It's going to load jQuery, right? and it's going to load, presumably, the uh, user service, which we don't have, and the JavaScript, which is responsible for controlling this page. Right? This one for talking to a database, and this one for rendering stuff from the database, from the server here on the HTML. OK? All right, so we'll, we'll revisit this in a minute. Um, so for now, Let's focus on implementing the, the front end and what this might look like. Uh, so for instance, we have some sample of what the, the table for rendering the, the, uh, the UI might look like. Right? Uh, first of all, let's, uh, before we get started, let's um, create an H1, see if, see that if this page actually works. We'll call it user admin. Right, let's run it, see what it uh, looks like. All right, so here we go. We have our user admin. Looks like we loaded Bootstrap already. Let's uh, add some some wrapping around this. Oops. Let's uh, add maybe a container. Oops. There we go. So class container container. And if we refresh, there's there's our user admin with some margins on the left or the right. Again. If you have a, you know, if you want to interrupt me, please feel free to to interrupt me. Uh, all right, excellent. So we have a user admin. Let's uh, let's keep going with uh, some of the sample code that we give you and what the table might look like. So let's grab that. And for now, we can close the head. We can close the the table, and let's refresh to see what we've got so far. There we go. So we have the, the headings of the table, username, password, first name, last name, role, right? Uh, some, some additional content that uh, we give you is for rendering the, the form for, that we can use to edit uh, these users or create new users. So let's grab that. I'm just going to go all the way down here, right? And if we, if inside of the same head, right, this is the outer table. We have the table head. We're just going to add a second row here, uh, that's going to contain our is going to contain our form. Right? There's our inputs for inputting a username, for inputting password, first name, and whatnot. Uh, we have a drop down here with with options for faculty, student, and admin. Right? Uh, what else? Uh, we have a uh, the last column looks like it's a whole bunch of um, buttons that we can we can click on. 
uh, and so where we can do a, there's a there's a, uh, um, a magnifying glass there's a create there's an update so let's uh, let's refresh and see what this what this might look like there it is right we have the username password first name last name drop down uh, and a couple buttons that we can click on very good excellent uh, let's let's keep going let's see what what else we give you right the um, uh, this is the, the the template row right this is the the row that we're going to hide we're going to use to copy and paste all the instances of the of the new users and that that we're going to put in the in the body of the document right we're going to put it uh, this is t head we have t body is going to be here right so we'll copy the t body and this is going to be a sample content a sample row I, it, there's a w you know web dev hidden although I don't believe I've created that style just yet right, let's see what this looks like if we, if we refresh there we have so notice that we have a row for Ada Ada Lovelace she's a faculty and so and the, what uh, web dev hidden probably should do is hide this content right so uh, so for instance and you might have it either as a as a style here, style, and where this class we're gonna say maybe we're gonna say maybe display none. And so if we refresh, notice that indeed it doesn't show the the the, the that row. The row is there, right? The row is still there. It's just not displaying. Right? So we have a, a table t body. There's our row. There's our row there. Right, that if we hover over it, uh, notice that it says display none, and that's why it's not showing. If we, if we remove the display, none, notice that it, it appears, appears, disappears, appears, disappears. So it's by styling is that we are uh, hiding it. Right? We want to be able to grab it programmatically from our JavaScript and then copy and paste it over and over whenever we get data from the uh, server. Um, all right, so we have the beginnings of what a template might look like uh, that uh, we can use to uh, manipulate the DOM and copy and paste. Uh, now we need some um, some programmatic uh, artifacts, you know, like JavaScript, so that we can manipulate this uh, uh, this this page. Okay, all right, so let's look at that next.